Hello and welcome to Horror Fanatic, the podcast that helps you find new, emerging, and undiscovered horror podcast content. I'm Greg, the host and curator of Horror Fanatic. If you are a horror fanatic, click that subscribe button now. This episode is a podcast feature episode. If you like the creator, check out the episode notes for links to subscribe. Today's episode is from Boys Watching Buffy. Joe Welke and Vance Tucker watch Buffy the Vampire Slayer for the first time ever and share their thoughts on every episode. All right, let's get this show started. Begin. Well, I think we should talk about it now. Thank you for knocking. If you don't know how I feel about it. I don't. This isn't a relationship. You don't need me. All you care about is lots of orgasms. Okay. Remember how we talked about private conversations? How they're less private when they're in front of my friends? Oh, we're not your friends. Go on. Please don't. This is important. Yes, but why is it here? Mom said you wanted me to swing by. Oh, oh yes, well, I, I meant uh, after sunset. Um, I need you to take Spike for a few days. What? 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 I'm not staying with him. I have a friend who's coming to town, and I'd like us to be alone. Oh, you mean an orgasm friend? Everybody and welcome to another episode of Boys Watching Buffy. We're just two boys watching every episode of Buffy the Vampire Slayer for the first time, giving our thoughts, our review, our reactions. We're your hosts. I'm Joe Welke. I am Vance. And today we're talking about season four, episode 10, titled Hush, written and directed by Joss Whedon. Original air date, December 14th, 1999, to an audience of 5.97 million people. And, uh, Got to get this off the chest first here, everybody. I was experiencing, I was one of the victims of the Southwest holiday travel debacles. (laughs) And boy, oh boy, did it fuck everything up in my life. (laughs) I was supposed to be back in LA uh, December 28th. That flight got canceled. The earliest I could get back to LA was January 1st. And I had plans to go to Las Vegas for New Year's. So I got my flight rerouted to Las Vegas on December 31st, was able to do the Las Vegas shit. And uh, on the drive back, me and Vance had planned to record once I got back on the second. Uh, Drive back initially started, I left at 11 a.m. And uh, when I left Las Vegas, it said, hey, this is a five and a half hour drive. I'm like, cool, that's in the ballpark of what we usually expect here. Google Maps decided to do this fuckery where, (laughs) you know how they always are like, if they update something, it's like, hey, we found a faster route. Do you want to take the faster route? I decided, I saw that and we were like, yeah, let's do the faster route. It was going to save a half hour of time. Google Maps took me on an off-road dirt road that eventually it told me to take a left at a certain turn and there was no left to be taken. It's just like you'd be driving in the shrubbery of the desert of Nevada. And uh, then it was like, okay, well, we'll reroute you to this other dirt road. Get to that dirt road. There's like five tires just there blocking it. And so this was like a half hour off of the highway. So then we had to drive a half hour back to get on the highway. And once we got to the highway, it was fucking so impossible to get back on the highway because so many people made the same Google Maps mistake (laughs) as as me. And uh, by the time we got back on the highway, it was like, okay, ETA is now six o'clock. And that was the time that me and Vance had originally planned to record this podcast because of the Southwest fuckery. And just the entire drive from Nevada to Los Angeles was just traffic. The ETA kept going up and up and up and up. And at that point, I just texted Vance. I was like, Vance, I don't think it's happening. (laughs) I didn't get back to L.A. until like 845, 11 a.m., to 8.45 p.m. I was like, dude, 
There's no way that I'm going to be doing this podcast. It would be the worst podcast we would ever record. We will just need to delay it. So that is what happened, everybody. Blame fucking Southwest for all this. I take it all the way back to Southwest because these motherfuckers fucked me so hard and I better be getting a goddamn reimbursement. This is Joe talking, by the way. <laughs> I got, we get some comments that like nobody can tell who's talking. This is Joe. I just gave a whole fucking spiel about this. This is my trip. And boy, oh boy, what a time to be alive. How was your New Year's though? New Year's was great. Everything once yeah. I was in Las Vegas was awesome. Okay. But uh, getting to there from there was just a goddamn travesty. And I don't ever want to go anywhere for holidays ever again. I want to fucking stay in my house <laughs> and just yeah. sit and go get a little popper at midnight. <laughs> there we go. Happy New Year, everybody. I, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we went to the the Roots concert at the uh, Walt Disney Concert Hall, LA Philharmonic. That's fucking awesome! And it was great. I hadn't seen the Roots live, and they put on a hell of a show. Yeah, and, I heard uh, they're yeah. great live, dude. Yeah, everybody gets a solo. It's it's amazing. It's not every day you get to watch an Academy Award winner on the drums, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I want to say, thought, dude, Black yeah. Thought is fucking incredible. Oh, amazing! Yeah, it's He's great. such a good rapper. Yeah, and their guitarist uh, just killed it. it. It was great. It was amazing. Um, highly recommend checking out the Walt Disney Concert Hall. Yeah, um, and I want to say Happy New Year to our listeners. Yeah, Happy New Year, yeah, everybody. We're back. It's twenty twenty three. Yeah. So this delay is completely on me, Joe. So there we have that. Um, but I'm going to push the blame over to Southwest. So if you have any complaints, uh, fucking write them because they're sons of bitches. And I fucking hey, hey, Google gets a little bit of a blame, but I'm okay because I didn't want to yeah, edit the Google podcast Map. that night. Dude, Google Maps <laughs> fucked me so hard. I mean, this is these are our robot overlords. Yeah. We, we, we put our trust in these robots. They yeah. fucked me so hard. The AI failed you. Oh, my God. But yeah, uh, hush. We do a podcast about Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we have a shout out, don't we? Oh, we do. We have a sh Sorry, everybody. I'm out of sorts. <laughs> we have a fucking sh 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 shout out to D Ladder 98 Left the fucking great review. Thank you so much. Really love it. Uh, this wish argument is legendary at this point. We keep getting <laughs> mentions about the wish. Uh, you know, I, I forgave Anya for her disgusting. Yeah, if, if you haven't listened to the wish episode and the follow up to the wish episode <laughs> after the <laughs> discord discourse, uh, yeah. do yourself a favor. Check that out. <laughs> uh, if, if you're just like starting, if you've seen all of Buffy, just jump to the wish. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> just get into it. <laughs> but uh, D Ladder, thank you so much for your very kind words. We really appreciate it. And uh, if you want to get a shish shish sh shout out, you know what to do. Rate and review on Apple Podcasts. That's how you do it. Um, We have a Patreon, everybody, where we review Angel. Want to remind everybody about that. Uh, and yeah, sign up for our Discord because there's lively conversations going on there. We had a, our first poll uh the other day which was very successful very fun yeah and uh, uh, yeah good times and uh the menu i want to say we we do a boys watching movies patreon mm -hmm. exclusive and we did the menu and the menu is now available on hbo max if you want to check that out and then uh follow us on patreon to hear our review of that yeah and i think scrooge to our other Boys Watching Movie Edition was, uh, I think that's on Amazon Prime. Yes. I know it's a little bit past the holiday season at this point, but, you know, Why just not? watch it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even watch it. Just listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We ready to do, am I missing anything? I think we've delayed this episode long enough. <laughs> yes, we have. Uh, so, yeah. Hush, everybody. This episode opens up with Professor Walsh talking about how important communication is and communication is the key to everything and you got to be communicative and she calls Buffy to this to the the front of the room to do like a demonstration uh, about communication or something and she's like all right for your demonstration I want you to lie on my desk and then she's like Riley 
you're a part of this demonstration too. And T.A. Riley walks over and he's just like over top of Buffy. Mm-hmm. And I was like, what the fuck kind of communication <laughs> demonstration is that? Dude, I was at this <laughs> point, I was, like, I was like, this is a dream. Yeah, of course. It is. I was like, the 90s were weird, but they weren't this weird. Yeah. I was watching this. I was like, I was a communication and social psychology major. I don't remember this happening. <laughs> and now Riley and Buffy are going to perform uh, sex for us all. And <laughs> Oh, everyone get your notepads out. Yeah. yeah. But uh, Riley goes in and he's just like on top of Buffy. And Buffy's like, oh, this is so scandalous. And Riley's like, don't worry. And he says, if I kiss you, the sun goes down. And I was like, what kind of cryptic bullshit is this? He says, if I kiss you, it'll make the sun go down. And I have to say, he has continued from the last episode where he said, you'll teach me. Like, Mm -hmm. so he ended last episode with a creepy line. And then Mm -hmm. he starts this one with a weirder line. Right? (laughs) Riley is so weird, dude. They just made him. They just made this character the weirdest character ever. I don't even understand after watching the episode what that line meant. Yeah, me neither. Um, But yeah, then they kiss. And, you know, when they first kiss every it's daytime and there's a bunch of students watching them. And then they kiss and then. It's dark out and everybody in the classroom disappeared and and Buffy's like, ooh, this is cool, isn't it? I don't know exactly when this happens, but she says the line, fortune favors the brave. Yeah. And I couldn't help but think of that Matt Damon crypto Super Bowl commercial. <laughs> Yeah, and how uh, <laughs> is he being sued now? Because I <laughs> but I couldn't help but think about that. But yeah, yeah. Um, but then she starts to hear some stuff going on in the hallway and she's like, what's going on out there? This is weird. Some weird shit happening. She goes out in the hallway and there's a little girl chanting creepy stuff and she's looking all creepy. And uh, the, there's a uh, Buffy wakes up and it was a it was obviously a dream and she's wake it up, wakes up and she's back in regular world in class. And, you know, there's some banter between her and Willow about like, oh, you, snore, you were snoring. but yeah, I got to say, Willow. OK, so Buffy falls asleep in class and then Willow's like, oh, she get we learned everything we needed for the test. Oh, I hope no one missed that. And I'm like, yeah. bitch, don't you know Buffy patrols at night? <laughs> like, like to stop trolling her for not being alert in class when she's saving lives at night. Yeah. The fact that she's yeah. even awake at all. Yeah. It, like Buffy should just look at Willow like, dude, you know what I do? Yeah. Like I get that she's trolling. It's like lighthearted or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And Willow's just going to give her the notes and help her cheat or whatever. Yeah. But, but but like well, Willow still seems begrudging to just like straight up cheat for Buffy. Yeah. But I'm like, come on. Let's yeah, go I would let Buffy life. cheat off of me all the fucking time. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, Buffy's like, yeah, I just had a really creepy dream. And then they start to walk outside. Mm hmm. And Riley is just like creepily waiting outside the door for both of them. And like, as soon as they pass the the exit, he just like jumps out and he's like, hey, how's it going? <laughs> what yeah. were you guys up to? <laughs> it's like, dude. <laughs> uh. um, so then Willow sees this happening and she's like, oh, well, I uh, I have a Wicca group to go to. I'm gonna, actually going to go to this Wicca group. You two uh, don't uh, get into any trouble or whatever. So she walks away and then Riley and Buffy are talking and Willow does not go to the Wicca group. She starts spying on fucking Buffy and Riley in the most 90s bullshit. Like, <laughs> like just has a folder in front of her face. Yeah, just standing in like a window outcropping and just like holding a book in front of her face. Like, yeah. And I'm like, OK, cool. She didn't even have to do that. <laughs> yeah. And, and like it's also like her spying goes for such a short amount of time too. Like, cause after that little scene, mm-hmm. it's just like over. Yeah. And Buffy and Riley go outside and they're talking about, you know, Oh, we, we got a, we got the final or whatever. And then they, they almost kiss at a certain point and they don't because they become stuttering nervous messes well, around. Well, each what other. happens is Buffy says, Oh, he's like, what are you doing tonight? She's like, patrolling. He's like, what? And she's like, petroleum, which is yeah. terrible. And then yeah. she asks him what he's doing tonight. And he's like grading papers. And then right when they're about to kiss, 
Buffy's like, wait, grading papers, but we already took the midterm. Like, yeah, what papers do you have to grade? And Riley's like, oh, da, 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 late ones. And it's like, Buffy, that this is the time you become master detective, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Like you're Benoit Blanc right here. <laughs> like, just get the kiss. <laughs> Benoit Blanc, one of Vance's uh, favorite movies of 2022. Yeah, Glass Onion. Glass Onion. Made the list. I still haven't seen it. Looks pretty ah, fun. You still haven't seen a lot of things, Joe. I still haven't seen RRR. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so then uh, Buffy's like got our eyebrow raised a little bit like, oh, that's a little suspicious. Riley might be lying to me. Because Riley also is a terrible liar. As soon as she's like, "What about what's up with this paper grade?" He's like, duh, duh, ging, duh. <laughs> "They all made lies that they didn't need to make." <laughs> well, it's like Buffy makes a stupid lie about the petroleum thing, but at least she's confident when she says it. True, you it know, is a confident of I'm doing a test on petroleum. Yeah, <laughs> and Riley's just like buying anything. So yeah, he's like, "Oh yeah, you were joking about being married. Fine, got it. Cool." Yeah. <laughs> At this point, would you still be interested in Buffy knowing how fucking crazy she is? Oh, I don't think hotness blinds people to certain things. I don't know. Fair. Yeah. So after this, uh, Buffy decides to call Giles about her crazy dream uh, because she's a little worried about it. She had the the chanting thing and uh, there was a creepy guy's face in there and it had something to do with. Uh, you know, this bald guy and they're called the gentlemen because the chanting girls mentioned something about like the gentlemen need seven Mm -hmm. and Buffy calls Giles and he's like, how do you know that it's not just a dream or is this like one of your prophetic dreams? Because you have that vision type of thing that we haven't mentioned in quite some time. So I need to remind everyone Uh, you sometimes can see the future. Mm -hmm. Uh, So he's like, all right, I'll do some research and we'll figure it out. And this is where, a, a camera tr- like kind of pans out and it reveals that like Spike is now living with Giles. They're like roomies. <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> yes. Just the two British guys, yeah. odd couple situation. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he's not chained up or nothing. He's just like free Roman. Yeah. He's just chilling, walking around. Why is he living there? I don't know. <laughs> like Spike like, can just they crawl the- into any other hole and come back. I mean, they got the info that they needed from. That's why they were keeping him alive or whatever. And and because uh, he had the information about the the initiative people. Yeah. Like, but he can like stay anywhere. He he can just walk and go and stay in like one of his eight different houses he probably has. Yeah. But now he's living with Giles and Giles is like fed up with him already. It's like, we'll kick him out. Well, he because he keeps eating his uh, biscuits or his crackers or something yeah which is uh interest spike likes his food man spikes yeah eater. well i mean we get an explanation i think we asked this question a couple podcasts ago but yeah. giles is like why are you even eating this like you just drink blood can you even enjoy food and spike's like i mean i can i do like the texture of the biscuits mixed in with the blood and giles <laughs> is like fuck i'll never be able to eat again <laughs> <laughs> that is I would love to see a Spike cooking show of just like him, like how to make, are you bored with just drinking blood out of people? It's like, <laughs> if you add a dash of paprika, a little, a little cinnamon, like. He becomes like an underground network <laughs> vampire celebrity chef. Yeah. Blood sausage is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Um. So then uh, Xander and. Anya start walking over to Giles's house and they're they're showing up and they're having an argument because Anya feels like Xander doesn't even care about her. And what even is this relationship? Do you even care about me? All you want to do is have sex. And Xander's like, look, I care about you. And if you don't think that I don't care about you, you must be a crazy lady. And she's like, well, that's not helping. And they show up and they're still fighting in Giles's house and and both Giles and Spike are like, I don't want to fucking hear any of this. <laughs> well, she talks about all you care about is orgasms. Yeah. And that gets everyone to just look. And the way Spike comes off the couch and looks at him, it's just like delightful glee. Yeah. Yeah. I Like Giles says something like, I don't want to hear anything about this. You two are like whatever. And Spike is like, oh, actually, I would like to hear some about it. Yeah. She goes on about like uh, 
Um, this he <laughs> Xander says, "Hey, I've told you about conversations, like private conversations, not conversations to talk about in front of my friends." And yeah. Spike's like, "Oh, we're not friends, so we're keep not going. friends. Keep going." Yeah, <laughs> this is entertaining yeah. for me. And then, uh, um, then Giles brings up that he uh he wants Xander to take Spike for the weekend because he's got a uh, a friend coming over. <laughs> Yeah, and then I think Anya's like, is this an orgasm friend? And Jazz is like, well, uh, yes. He's <laughs> like, this is the worst. He's like, that's the worst way you could have put this. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, I do love that Jazz is like, hey, can you take the kid off of my hands? I got to fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're arguing about like how Spike doesn't want to be with them while they're banging. While Anya and Xander are banging. And Anya's in the background arguing about... uh. Oh my God. So you're canceling out date tonight because of this? And he's like, I don't even want to take Spike. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's, good scene. Like this whole dynamic of all of these characters interacting is so good. Yeah. Why doesn't he just stay in Angel's old apartment? I, I don't know. Or that place that the Angel stayed. That castle has to be empty, right? I guess that they just want to keep an eye on Spike. Be- I mean, but it's, like, it's why? entertaining he for the show, but I have yeah. no idea. Like, it doesn't make any sense as to why he would be like this. Why he would want that too. Yeah. I, like he's about to go like get what's tied up in Xander's. Like, yeah. What's keeping him there? Like, eh, it doesn't have make we any ever, sense. Have we ever, we've never seen Xander's mom, right? Or no. any of his parents, yeah. No. It's just funny to think of her finding Spike tied up in the basement <laughs> while Xander's sleeping. <laughs> Like, what are you into, Xander? Yeah. So then uh, we have Willow at the Wicca group, and she is just silently judging all of them because this doesn't even really seem too much like a Wicca group. Uh, They're all going around talking about, like, I don't know, like empowerment stuff and Mm -hmm. feminism stuff and, like, lightly touching upon, like, energy crystals and shit. And Willow's like, um what is up with all this? Are we ever going to talk about real spells? And they're like, idiot, that shit's not real. (laughs) (laughs) That's like a negative connotation to witchcraft. Like it's kind of like the crystal uh, horoscope astrology level of, you know. Yeah. Which which I was kind of relieved because I was like, man, I don't think there should be this many witches. (laughs) Like there should be this many uh, Amy's and Willow's. Well, I know that one of my predictions was like there was going to be a Wicca group and they were mm-hmm. going to like take things. But if this is the Wicca group, yeah, oof, no. there, no. <laughs> there, <laughs> there, there goes that one. Yeah, that one turns out doesn't I, seem to I'm be. I'm still waiting for to. the Watchers to show up. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in this Wicca group, there is one girl. Like once Willow starts mm-hmm. mentioning like, hey, w- w- are we going to ever talk about like actual witch shit? Because that's what I'm here for. There is one girl, I forget her name. Uh, uh, Tara. Tara, okay. Uh, Tara kind of looks up at Willow and she's like, peaked interest. She's like, huh, maybe this girl kind of knows what the fuck's going on here. And like none of these other mm-hmm. quote unquote witches really know. And maybe Willow knows that witchcraft is is real. And mm-hmm. I'm going to take an in- interest in this girl. Yeah. Tara's uh, interesting from, yeah. Yeah. So... After the Wicca group meeting adjourns, Willow goes and she tells Buffy about this appointment, about it. She's like, yeah, these girls, they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're just a bunch of, you know, bullshit, not real witches. And Buffy's like, oh, that's a shame. <laughs> Buffy's <laughs> like, phew, less, less weird spells that we have to deal with. Right. Mistaken spells yeah. that go awry. Yeah. Everyone in the town is somehow affected by it. <laughs> Didn't we just have a bad witchcraft thing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so then Buffy starts rambling to Willow about how, you know, every time I'm around R- Riley, I get nervous and I become a babbling mess. And, you know, I, I feel bad because I'm always lying to Riley. I feel terrible about this. And I wish that I could tell Riley about being a slayer, but I know that I can't. And I was like... Why can't you? Yeah. Everybody else seems to know that you're a slayer. <laughs> yeah, like bring more people. <laughs> and I mean I mean the can... rest of Sunnydale High knows that uh, <laughs> you did at least. flips up a building <laughs> in front of <laughs> <Yeah>. everybody. <laughs> Dude, did no one from Sunnydale High go to Sunnydale U? Right? Like, oh, I mean, granted, uh Willow's there, but 
and Oz went there. But other than like uh, people outside of that group. Yeah. I really thought saying. Jonathan would be there. No, Jonathan. I mean, we don't know if Jonathan's smart, smart. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I think that Jonathan survives. I thought that, he survived. I mean, we just saw him tackle. We saw him tackle a guy. That's I think that it. he comes in later. Yeah, we saw him yeah. tackle a guy. Yeah. I, yeah, um, I think that he does come back. back. To, I hope so. Um, uh, it'd but, be nice to just randomly have him on campus. Just that yeah. random campus guy is always fun. Um, but uh, yeah, Buffy is sad that she can't tell Riley about it. And then it cuts to Riley talking. I think his name was Forrest. Is yep. that the guy's name? Yeah. Uh, he's talking to Forrest about like, man, I wish I could tell Buffy about, you know, being part of the initiative, but you know how it is. And Forrest is like, I will, yeah, I know you fucking been talking about Buffy and her being special a bajillion times. I'm sick of hearing about it. Yeah, it's like, we got a job that would get us so many girls, but we can't t- tell them about it. You know, right? so that's the that's the cross we bear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And I, I love just, that Forrest's uh, whole thing is like, I'm trying to get pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, doesn't it's care about fighting that demons. I can't yeah. get pussy because of this. <laughs> and are they in school or are they military age? Like, what are they? Yeah, I want to know how old Riley actually like, is. Like, how long has Riley been in this group? I guess we might find out soon enough. But like, yeah. Uh, also, I don't know why Riley's like, oh, man, it's just so hard. I want to tell her I'm in this group. It's like, why? Because you accidentally said you had to grab great papers once? Like, yeah. my God. Like, have you ever gone undercover at all? Like, it's not. <laughs> yeah. And if you've been, a, he's like an elite level person in the initiative. Like, yeah. is this the first time that he's ever. You're pretending to be a TA working with a teacher who moonlights as a real teacher. Yeah. And right. also runs this group. Like. <laughs> She actually has real courses that she teaches. Why would you add this workload on top of the initiative to two years? Like, why? Just be a person in town. It doesn't give you... It doesn't seem like being at the school gives them any added benefit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, they can't... Yeah. I don't understand. Like, you could... Like, it made sense when Giles was the librarian because all of the people that he was working with were high schoolers, and that's where he kept all of his books. Yes. Like, I guess that the initiative thing is underneath of the school, but they could have a different access point. Yeah, they actually do. We yeah. find out later that they have one. So, I just don't get... Like, they're making them their job so much harder by, like, I'm going to be a professor plus the secret military... Uh, initiative person. Yeah, I need you to be a TA in school and hang out with students, but not yeah. get information about demons from students. Yeah. I like, mean, I understand being at Sunnydale because it was right on the hell mouth, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, also, how long has the initiative been around? It would have taken a few years just to build that facility. Yeah. So, where the fuck have they been <laughs> this know. entire time? We, we might find out. Order jump. This we might be jumping like, ahead. We might be jumping this ahead. Is ca- this is also kind of like that whole thing with Marvel movies where it's like, why don't they just call you Avengers? Or like, where was Captain Marvel during? No. But like, no. th- this is weird and valid, I feel like. Yeah. A, a valid enough nitpick. You I, know? My biggest issue is that there was a vampire murdering gang on campus for years. Yeah. Operating un- un- unknown for the initiative, which is also on campus. They were yes. robbing kids. They were killing kids and robbing their rooms and saying they were going away. And the initiative didn't realize that there were vampires in yeah. an abandoned frat house or something. Whatever, man. This whole thing is a little weird. Uh, but yeah, we'll we'll get to it. We'll hopefully we'll get some more information as we go along. Um, so then we go to Spike being tied up at Xander's house and. And Xander's tying him up. And Spike's like, you know, I can't bite you, right? And Xander's like, I'm not taking any chances here. I'm going to fucking tie you up, which I would as well. Yes. Uh, and then Spike starts taunting Xander about, like, the fight that he was having with Anya. He's like, oh, do you even like me, Xander? Do you even care about me? And Xander's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's it's great. I don't think we had too many scenes of Xander and uh, Spike. Mm-hmm. So this is fun. And I yeah, like Xander being like, I'm delicious. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you would definitely yeah. want to eat me. Yeah. I am delicious. I feel like uh, Spike. It, Spike is such an interesting character. Yeah. Yeah. I also got to say, and this is Vane Joe talking here. Oh, there's boy. a scene. 
I don't know if it's later or if it, we just passed it, but where Riley is in a tank top mm-hmm. and he is supposed to be this like elite military guy and he does not have that good of a bod. All right. His bod is very underwhelming. This is Joe speaking right here. This is Joe. This is Joe, is Joe is speaking. I'll to take, me. I'll take yes. all of this. His bod's not that good. He's like kind of scrawny. Uh, and it doesn't have like good posture even, but like he's supposed to be this imposing military guy. And then we have this scene with Xander and Spike and fucking Xander is looking good, dude. Xander looks ripped in this. I will. He's been hitting the weights, man. Like Xander looks great. He's having sex with the former demon. You know how much energy that must take? (laughs) (laughs) So kudos to Xander for, you know, pumping some iron in the off season He's looking good, man. Uh, and Riley, quit quit pumping it in the wind and start pumping it in the gym, my friend. Uh, <laughs> what is that a scene? No. Okay. Uh, I, I heard like... it. On, it's, I heard it on regular show. It's that cartoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like regular show. Regular show is fantastic. I never watched it regularly, but I do like regular show. And he's not really finding too much out about him. He, you know, he he's getting a little bit of a a trail. But then Olivia shows up and she is ready to fuck. Yeah. She comes in and Giles is like, oh, I was just doing some research. And Olivia's like, all right, is that enough small talk? I'm ready to get dicked down, dude. Yeah. And I was like, this relationship rules. This is <laughs> why we didn't Giles. do a podcast as soon as you got back to L.A. Because we had to travel. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I want mean, Joe to come with a Giles podcast to treat me like Olivia treated Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hi, what are you doing? You want something to drink? She's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> shut up. Kiss me, you tall drink of water. Let's go to that bed Jenny Calendar was murdered in. <laughs> <laughs> it really is that same bed. I, I think it's the same sheets. <laughs> same sheets, same bed, same location. He didn't even move it. <laughs> didn't do some feng shui and like put the bed somewhere else. Yeah. yeah, but uh, dude, good for Giles. Olivia is smoking hot. Uh, I love that we don't know anything about her. She's just no, flying she, in. She flies in, bangs, leaves. Yeah, good on him. So then we cut to our first look at the gentleman who are in this town. It's the gentleman dude, and he's in a clock tower, and he's doing some kind of spell. And people in the city, uh, they're getting like their their voices sucked out of their mouths, uh, including the whole gang. You see the whole gang like getting their their voices sucked out of their mouth and the whole city. It's happening to them. And all of these voices are coming into this clock tower. And I got to say, dude, the design and look of these gentlemen guys is so scary to me. I wrote down the exact same thing. This demon look is the best demon look of the show so far. Yeah, they're, it looks so good. They're in black suits. They have a permanent grin on their face. And it's not like, a, you know, a, like Death Note, the mm-hmm. Shinigami Ryuk. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. like he kind of has a devilishly grin. But they just have like this, like, I don't know. It's just and they like the gold, it's the unsettling. silver teeth. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have silver teeth that are kind of like leaking. They have yeah. these suits and they look like super tall too. Yeah. And they float. I mean, this is getting ahead, but they float yeah. like a yeah, few dude, feet they, off the ground. Yes. I was watching that. I was like, how did they do that in like the 90s? Like I get, but like they float and it's so unsettling yeah. to look at. And then they have henchmen that are in straight jackets that aren't tied up. Yeah. Now that, like, these henchmen around. guys. I do. I, I like the aesthetic. It doesn't function, though. Yeah, I didn't really like the henchmen guys. I thought the gentlemen were scary enough on their oh, own. Oh, the gentlemen are scary enough. I, they were fucking scary, dude. I think that I think the, them having like little guys in straight jackets kind of leads to some weirdness to it. But mm-hmm. when you want them to be the persons that fighting for you, mm-hmm. the fact that they're in a straight jacket takes away their mobility of fighting. So it's like, why? Um Yeah. But it, this, I mean, these are my demons, demons number one for yeah. the show. 
These guys are so good. They also do this. I don't know if I liked or disliked it, but they are always having like their palms clasped and then yeah. like gesturing yeah. slightly. Oh, yeah. And their their heads are always tilting. And this yeah. dude, it was so good. Mm-hmm. It's so scary looking. What they do is also the scariest thing that's happened in this show. I think yeah. we talked about something else in Buffy that was like, wow, this was genuinely scary. Mm-hmm. I think this is the one, though. Yeah. When, when we see them in action, it is yes. terrifying. Yes. Yeah. Um, And like the implications of them being yeah. in action. Like, yeah. it's just yeah. so good. Exactly. Like, yeah. I would understand. I think that this is like uh, one of the better well-known episodes of Buffy mm-hmm. probably or like a fan favorite or something. Yeah. And I completely understand why. This is a great villain. I thought this episode from hearing about it, I knew there was an episode that we know there's a musical episode and we knew there was one where they didn't talk. Right. Mm-hmm. I thought the one where they didn't talk was going to be silly as hell. Yeah. Not dark as fuck. There, There is there's, some silliness to oh, it. Yeah. There's some death. Which, which works really yes. well. Yeah. But it is fucking scary yeah. too. I thought it was going to be like silly all the way through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, then it's the next day. Buffy wakes up to go to the bathroom and uh, she, you know, brushes her teeth or whatever. She starts walking back and she sees a girl crying in the hallway and she's like, huh, that's weird. Yeah. And, I don't know why that was weird. Yeah. That she was crying. I don't know. Have you been in the dorm? <laughs> Yeah, like, that's just that, that's just Buffy. That was you and Willow the last few episodes. <laughs> like, that's par for the course living yeah. in a dorm, you know. But Buffy looks over and she's like, oh, OK, that sucks. And girl's crying. So then she goes back to her dorm and Willow wakes up and they try to talk to each other and they can't. <laughs> I thought it was so funny that Buffy tried to say good morning. I don't know yeah. why to me. I was like, I don't know how often I said to my roommate, good morning. <laughs> Every Like just yeah. straight up good morning. It felt like, I don't know. It just felt maybe sick. girls are different. Yeah, maybe girls they, are like do that kind of stuff. It just especially felt, like best friends like that. It felt like you would say something else than yeah. good morning. Like good morning seems so formal. That's yeah. th- that's what it was. It felt formal. Yeah, but uh, they quickly realize like, what the fuck's going on? We can't talk, mm-hmm. and they start freaking out. They're like, what What's going on? Yeah. Why can't we talk? <laughs> I like they start uh, thinking that they're deaf, and I'm like, yeah. is someone not going to just bang on something so you can hear? Like yeah. other sounds and they don't really do that. Yeah. So uh after they freak out for a little bit, you know, we get pans across the city of, of like or in the dorm and stuff, like mm-hmm. no one can talk. Uh Xander wakes up and he can't talk and he starts blaming Spike. And Spike's like, I can't fucking talk either, dude. Like, what do yeah. you what do you want <laughs> from me? And then Xander's like, something's up, something's up. I'm gonna call Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that uh Spike flips him off. With the yeah. uh, reverse two fingers up, the British. Yeah, uh, the, the British two fingers, yeah. which is, I think it's supposed to mean like gouge out your eyes or something. Uh, No, I don't think I, I don't think it's that. I'm pretty sure it's is it gouge. Like but having, it's like, but it's the like eyeballs on your fingers. Oh, all right. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't so. know. Maybe. But uh, Xander call, tries to call Buffy and then Buffy picks up and they both realize like, oh, shit. <laughs> we can't talk. <laughs> and she just like looks up like you dumb dummy. I can't <laughs> believe I keep losing to you guys. <laughs> yeah. So then Riley and Forrest are now getting dressed to go to their fucking basement because they're freaking out. They're like, something's up. The initiative. We need to get the initiative on this. Mm-hmm. And they swipe their key cards or whatever. They get their retinal scan. And one of the things that we see earlier in the episode mm-hmm. is Riley does a voice scan thing. Yeah. Great to reestablish and, that at the beginning of the episode. It, yeah. And so they start to go down on the elevator and the thing is like vocal code recognition. And then Riley goes up to him, He's like, because <sighs> he can't talk. <laughs> and then it's like uh, the, the elevator's like, oh, you must be an enemy. You're intruding. We're going to self-destruct and make uh, uh, preventative measures. And then he like has a breakthrough and do this override and all this like noxious gas starts going in to, to kill him and Forrest. And they start mm-hmm. freaking out, which I was like, this is pretty cool. The stakes are intense <laughs> there. And, and Forrest got the notepad and he's just writing dumb shit like hurry up on it yeah. in the background. Yeah. Um, but they eventually, you know, get down to the basement. Uh, they do the override. Uh, and uh, they, they get to Professor Walsh and she's like, something's up. And they're like, we know. There's a lame joke here. 
Okay. The, where they get down and she like points to a sign behind them. And oh, then yeah, it's yeah. like they pan over to the sign and it says, in case of emergency, use the staircase. Yeah. And I'm like, is there really a staircase down here? Yeah. Because why would you why would you not always take the stairs? Well, it's also like, the, is the staircase not equipped with fucking <laughs> vocal code recognition and yeah. retinal scan? Yeah, it's like one of those added jokes that just undermines everything that just happened. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, then we have a shot of the witch girl, Tara, walking around campus. Mm -hmm. And she's kind of like suspicious. And she's like, what's going on here? This is weird. And then a guy, like a random extra guy, just drops a bottle. And everybody hears it smash. And he's like, oh, shit, sorry. (laughs) Oh, yeah. They're in uh, the little, uh, that little hallway, that that couch area, that lounge. Yeah. 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 (laughs) <laughs> when he drops it, everyone hears it and everyone freaks out. I guess because it, because if it's so silent everywhere else, any yeah. kind of like noise would freak you out, I guess. I, well, this is this brings up not an issue necessarily. They the town goes into mourning very quickly. Mm-hmm. As if like I don't think you would go like people are like, walking around. There's end of day stuff later where we're walking. Yeah. Out. Like there's like this religious like revelations and a guy like reading from the Bible, which I don't even understand that scene. The more I think about it, because you can't hear someone reading and they're yeah. all just like <laughs> sitting there like at a pulpit. My favorite guy is the guy that's selling $10 like dry erase boards, yeah, with, dry like, erase boards. <laughs> that you can put around your neck. Yeah, um, this is like Buffy and Willow walking okay, around yeah. the silent town to be like, oh, this yeah. is a citywide thing or whatever. And they're like huddled together like, oh, my God, what's going on? Like, what's happening? And I'm like, sure, you would freak out. You would think what's happening. But I mm-hmm. don't think the city would go into such a panic. Like, yeah, I mean, later city. on, later on in the, <laughs> the fucking there's like a car crashed and everything. Yeah, like, a car what crashed. Would that happen? <laughs> It's a car crashed into a fire hydrant and it's just going yeah. off. And I'm like, what, at what point did you not? You could still yeah. hear stuff. Deaf people exist in the world. Yeah, there mute are people, people that are mute. exist as well. There was a uh, all semi mute kid in Scrooge. He seemed yeah. to be functioning pretty well. Um, it's just, it, it's weird, and it's it might be a little because we have text messaging now. <laughs> we went through the pandemic where we mm-hmm. were like alone. Like you could turn on TV and watch it. Yeah, you could listen to music. You could Dude, still do stuff. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like everything shut off. Honestly, there are days where like I just won't really leave my uh, or I'll leave my apartment, but I just won't talk to anybody. Yeah. You know, life yeah. goes on. Yeah, it's just it was just like zero to a hundred so quick. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, uh, but yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it would be freaky if everyone in the city. But uh, they act like the world. Had, they act like the world had ended. Basically. Yeah. But uh you know, Buffy and Willow go to Giles's house to meet with the gang and they're all researching and trying to figure out like what's going on. And Buffy and Willow had bought those message boards with the chains around. Yeah. <laughs> um, Wouldn't this would be like the perfect time for silent disco? The bronze. Ooh. Remember those? Dude, silent discos are the shit. I've never done one of those. I I prefer mingling and talking to people when I go out. So silent discos defeat the whole purpose of that for me. I did a silent disco when I went to the Taco Bell Hotel, and it was a lot of fun. Man. I just wanted to let us breathe in that a little moment. <laughs> just let that moment breathe. Let me, <laughs> the Taco let me Bell Hotel. It. Everybody, I'm a huge Taco Bell fan. I love Taco Bell. Baja Blast. I've mentioned it several times on the podcast. Taco Bell for And they one don't weekend. sponsor us, do they? No, they should. Uh, one of my Christmas gifts that I got this year was a Taco Bell gift card. Very stoked about that. Um, but Taco Bell like rented out a hotel in Palm Springs, California for one weekend only. And they made everything Taco Bell themed. They gave you free Taco Bell and I went to it and it was fucking magical, everybody. And that is Joe Welke talking. Yep. (laughs) Yep. 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 (laughs) We should add Um, a picture on, uh, uh, tier, uh, $2 to get Joe some Taco Bell. (laughs) Dude. (laughs) Would very much appreciate that. Um, anyway, 
So, yeah, they're researching and they turn on the TV and the TV says that, you know, it's uh, this I guess it's national news because it's not in Sunnydale because nobody can talk in Sunnydale. And they're talking about this weird epidemic that's floating around Sunnydale where nobody can talk. And they say that it's a citywide case of laryngitis. Uh, Some people are blaming flu vaccines for the thing. And I was like, oof, current. (laughs) Yeah. The thing about that is that's like might be one of like the vaccine stuff is whatever. Ridiculous. But to blame the flu vaccine for a nationwide epidemic or a a citywide epidemic, not everyone in the city gets the flu vaccine. Yeah. And it's also like the whole country does get flu vaccine. So why wouldn't so, it affect everyone yeah. else that got like, flu Why vaccine? is Sunnydale specifically? Why is it just Sunnydale? And why yeah. is a 10-year-old who didn't get a flu vaccine not able to speak? Like, <laughs> it falls apart right away. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, but I mean, the, the gang's watching this and they're like, what? That's the <laughs> dumbest bullshit I've ever Obviously, heard. Obviously, it's demons. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At that point, you're like, well, I guess... I might side with vaccines if it's going to be yeah. demons or vaccines. And yeah. <laughs> Except that everyone in Sunnydale so knows know that there's the demons. demons. Yeah. Everybody they should. Else. They should. But uh, the entire city is quarantined until the the everybody figures out what the hell's going on. And this just guts the group. They're like, my yeah. God, nothing can get in. How will we, yeah. how will we get our food and goods? Like, <laughs> They're like, <laughs> you can still ship shit in. They can yeah. still... They're going to survive. Amazon, some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is pre-Amazon, right? Yeah. Yeah. But uh, then we go to Maggie, Wa- uh, Professor Walsh, and she's talking to the initiative guys through a computer that has a voice, and she wants to protect the citizens. They, <laughs> that they, computer they gotta... system is so big. Yeah, it's It's enormous. the mainframe. <laughs> And it's got that stupid ass robot voice. We want to protect the citizens. We need to maintain order in town. You must go and protect the citizens. Do not wear your uniforms to yeah. not raise suspicion and <laughs> yeah. and keep the crowds calm. Like why? Godspeed and may the force be with you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Riley writes, what is going on? I'm working on it. Yeah. They have no, um, the initiative, no clue. No clue. They, of course they don't. Yeah. But so this is when Buffy's walking around because she's on patrol in the city and uh, she sees the car crash into the fire hydrant. She's like, wow, this is crazy. And uh, then she sees Riley and Riley's breaking up a silent fight that's going on. This fight, dude. <laughs> it's two guys in business suits and they are upset because... I don't know. They can't talk to each (laughs) other. (laughs) They lost a big business deal because no one can talk. I have no idea. I would love the backstory of this fight. And I would love the backstory of two people who, I don't know how old Riley is supposed to be. Maybe Mm -hmm. 20-something. But to see a 20-something, plain clothes, walk in between two of you, push his arms out and separate the two of you. And then they're like, okay, we'll stop. Yeah. Also, like, the blocking of this fight is so awkward, too. It's far away because Buffy's looking at it, but yeah. it just was like, where are they coming from? They're just standing yeah. in the street. Why is this car crashed? <laughs> <laughs> like, I could see they were being rioting, but you could still hear stuff. Yeah. Like, you would hear someone break in. No one can scream for help. You can't call the police for help. Texting is not a big thing at this point. Mm-hmm. Which, like, if texting was a thing, an internet yeah. on a phone, yeah, no one would even, fog. no yeah. one would even notice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'd be like Call of Duty Bros being like, "What? I can't yell at you." <laughs> That'd be like when you find out. But yeah, but yeah. So Buffy sees Riley break up this fight, and Riley like fixes the lapels on the one guy's shirt, and he like gives him the tap on the shoulder, like, "You're good, man. You're good." <laughs> when he starts fix- <laughs> adjusting guys' tie and stuff, I'm like, yeah. "Yo, swing on Riley." <laughs> yeah, right. that's so patronizing. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, "Who the fuck are fuck you, you, dude?" Like, exactly. Like, you don't know my life. This guy <laughs> fucked my wife. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this fight was scheduled before the silence happened. Yeah, they were meeting at the flagpole at <laughs> yeah. three, regardless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Buffy goes up to Riley, well, and Buffy, they do the whole- like the guy tries to get up. 
that gets pushed back and she like mm-hmm. breaks his wrist basically. <laughs> yeah. So unnecessary. And I'm just like, what do these guys think is happening? <laughs> but Buffy walks over to Riley and they do the whole like, you good? Like silent, like, are you okay? Yeah, we're okay. And then Riley's Don't like, they like okay. hug like they Yeah, they do, hug. They hug as if they just got out of like a, a plane crash or something. Right? <laughs> like as if they thought they were never gonna see each other again. Like Buffy just came from a deserted island. Yeah. It's, it's been like a day since they saw each other. <laughs> it's, just, it's so overly dramatic. Like people aren't people aren't dying yet. Yeah. Um, so they finish hugging and Riley does like the shoulder tap to Buffy to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts walking away and then he's like, wait a minute, this is the perfect time. None of us can stutter if we can't talk. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how to talk to her without being like, I'm an initiative. So Yeah. So guess what? I'm a Leia. I'm a fucking plant one on you right now. Why you can't say no. He's like, he's like, oh, down this, down this just made it a lot worse. Like the yeah. rapists in Sunnydale are oh, just dude. going crazy. This town. And we know that there's a lot of fucking creeps yeah. in Sunnydale. Now I just realized this is really dangerous. Yep. Yeah. But uh, we see the sweet side of it where Buffy and Riley smooch for quite some time. And then yeah. Riley gives her the pat on the show. Hey, put her there, Tiger. And he walks away. <laughs> so I did not know how to how to feel about the timing of this kiss. Yeah. Because we see, it's, it's we've it's seen weird. him kiss in a dream to start. Mm-hmm. And you're like, okay, whatever. Even that was a little weird. and Because it was like Maggie Walsh was like, we're going to watch my two <laughs> students fuck. Maggie Walsh is <laughs> unbuttoning her shirt while she's watching. <laughs> <laughs> and Willow's like looking over top of her book. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, but then they kiss here and it's supposed to be like, it's supposed to be like a wow, they did it moment. I think I it's guess. supposed to be heightened because everyone is so traumatized about the event of losing your voice. But mm-hmm. I don't feel like the losing your voice trauma is like that big. <laughs> Yet, yeah. Like it hasn't been like, this is week three and no one can speak. And like everything is falling apart. It's like yeah. our three. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like I don't think that things would ramp up this quickly, yeah. you know? So it's not a, it's not like a walking dead situation where I'm like, Oh my God, they found each other. They had to fight through all the chaos and now they kiss it. Yeah. I think that's what they wanted. Yeah. I feel like they missed the mark. Yeah. Like for their big first kiss, like I feel like this kind of misses yeah. the mark. Yeah. But uh, you know, whatever. They got it over with. <laughs> but now but now we get a scene of the gentlemen floating around town with their minions God, and the boys. So cool, man. It's so good, man. Like these guys are fucking scary looking. And if I saw them floating around dude, something's so weird about just them floating. Yeah. Because like, they look calm too. I love the name yes. gentlemen. Because they just are in these suits. They look yeah. calm. They, they're like the a little, they're like a, a more distinguished version of that like hospital demon with the hat. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the crooked face and like the like sly hat who looks like a villain. Like yes. these look like villains, but oh man, yeah. I love everything about the gentleman, mm-hmm. dude. Yeah. Uh, well, it's also something that kind of like, I don't want to say it's uncanny valley, but mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. see. A little bit, yeah. To see them moving and not like, you know, doing the motions of moving, like their hands aren't moving, like they're walking, their legs aren't moving. It's just freaky. And they're very like, wide eyed. Yeah. Like things don't add up. And like when you look at it, it like breaks your brain a little bit. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I loved it. It's so good. So. Uh, oh, I want, Olivia, we, also, we also have to say that um, they need to get seven. Yes, they need to get seven. We don't and, know why. Mm-hmm. And we never find out why. <laughs> yeah. And that's we, a little bit of a letdown. Yeah. We we know that they need to get seven of something at this point in yes. the episode. But we don't know what happens if they get the seven, which is, yeah. which is I think, uh, just one of those things you kind of want to know. Yeah. Like, I feel like this could have been a two-parter with them actually collecting. They, they have to collect seven hearts. Yeah. Um, I don't know what if they want to if there's like special hearts that they need to collect or like they need hearts of X, Y, and Z. Well, it seems like it because in this scene, they're well, uh, you can go through Olivia, but later they start look. They keep skipping over rooms. 
Yeah. They look like they're going for specific people, which yeah. I didn't understand necessarily. Yeah, it's like they're floating. We'll, we'll get to it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, well, let's talk about Olivia first. So Olivia is sleeping at Giles' house and she wakes up and she goes downstairs and she's a little freaked out, you know. Um, but she looks out the window and she sees like across the way, one of the floating gentlemen is at a neighbor's door. And she's like, oh, holy shit, this is creepy as fuck. And then she's looking at out it and like trying to focus and see better like what the guy looks like. And then a dude just floats by Giles's window and it's perfect. It's like one of those. You remember those old YouTube videos where it's like trying to get you to focus on like a dot and then yeah. like a scary thing yeah. shows up. It's, it's this a, is it's a, this is a great jump scare. Yeah. And it's a jump scare without the huge sound effect. Yeah. To it. Like the giant violin yeah. strike or whatever. Yeah. Where you're like, am I jumping because I saw something or am I jumping because he just played the loudest sound I've ever heard in my <laughs> life? <laughs> but uh, the gentleman just floats by with his wide-eyed, creepy grin. And dude, I actually like, I jumped because it was fucking scary. I was like, this is awesome. Yeah. But they don't go into Giles' house. They don't go after Yeah, her. they don't. But he Which looks at her. He just looks her straight in the face like, what are you going to do? Yeah. Um, can you shoot them with guns, dude? <laughs> that is, <laughs> I think that will always be my question with every demon. <laughs> can you break their necks? <laughs> like, yes, I mean, that seems you to can. be the Buffy breaks the, the neck in this. Yeah, she Buffy breaks all the necks, dude. Like, it's whatever. But yeah, like, um, could I shoot one of the gentlemen? Yeah, I think I could. I think you could too. I mean, if they're like an upgraded version of that uh, hospital demon, I mean, he got yeah. his neck snapped. Yeah. But whatever. I, I yeah. guess they can get physically hurt. Yeah. But uh, I mean, this it scene, seems like they shouldn't be. It seems like there's only one way to defeat them, um, according yeah. to the story. But yeah, I will say that this is the best horror that I think Buffy has had. So, like this scene yeah. of Olivia is the best scene of horror in Buffy the Vampire Slayer that I've seen so far. I will say the next scene is the best scene of horror in Buffy. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're, right. you're absolutely right. <laughs> this um, is a good uh, teaser for it. But yeah. Yeah. So the next scene is uh, the gentleman floating around the dorms and they're looking around. And like Vance said earlier, like they're looking at certain doors and they're kind of like, mm, not this one. And they're floating by and they're like, mm, not that one. And they finally find one door. And it's room 118. Yeah. Because if there's any significance to that, because yeah, later like Buffy and Willow live in room two fourteen, which we see on the on the sheet. Mm -hmm. So I was like, are these numbers meaning anything? I don't, I don't know what they mean, but I just noticed that they skipped over doors. They yeah. picked a specific room. Yeah. So they go to this door, they knock on the door, and it's some random dude, and they're knocking on the door, and he wakes up, and he's like, huh, it's pretty late at night. Mm -hmm. He's like, huh, what's this? And so he opens the door, and the gentleman just like bust in uh one of the gentlemen grabs the guy the straight jacket dudes I yeah the straight jackets dudes hold them down and this dude is like freaking out he's trying to scream but obviously he can't and the horror of that is so so yes. terrifying and then that's when the horror kicks in the horror yeah. kicks in it's when you can't scream for help and, and you I'm can't like, do anything yeah like and i'm like, being held down and i was like oh my god now this is scary like people walking around the street, like not being able to talk to each other. That's eerie. Yeah. But this is terrifying. So the gentlemen come down, come into the room as well. And they, one thing that we forgot to mention too, is like they, you're usually carrying like briefcases too, mm. or like one of them yes. is. And they open up their briefcase and the one gentleman gives the other gentleman like a scalpel. And this scene of just the, the one gentleman with the scalpel with his huge smile and his huge eyes just going down to cut this guy. First of all, I want to say when he's being held down, I was like, are they going to cut his dick off? Like, it seemed like they, they de-pantsed him, didn't it? I didn't think that. You, I feel like you always go straight to dicks. <laughs> Dude, it seemed like they were pulling they his a, pants I, down. I did not get that vibe at all. <laughs> they opened his shirt and his chest was fully exposed. All right, man. I guess I'm always thinking about my dick. You know, I wouldn't want to have my dick. 
<laughs> like, take my sure. heart. Take my heart, but not the peace. <laughs> it's barely there anyway. So <laughs> the heart's barely there. So whatever. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, then they start to like, the, the guy is like going down with the, with the scalpel. And then you think the dude's trying to scream. And it is horrifying. The pain of having a unanesthetized surgery. Mm-hmm. And not being able, like, and he's he's probably screaming his lungs out, but he, he yeah. can't be heard, and that is so terrifying, man. Mm-hmm. And they these guys are doing it with a delightful grin on their face. Yeah, and why and this guy? Why this guy? Yeah, I don't know what is the significance. Like, there has to be some kind of lore behind these guys that you know, if you dig deeper into the gentleman. But it doesn't make sense later when they're chasing uh, someone else that they randomly stumble upon. Yeah, but yeah. But uh, yeah, so they they take his heart and he, you know, one of the gentlemen plops it onto a table back at their clock tower thing and they plop it down and there's like four or five other gentlemen and like the minions, they all start applauding like the head gentleman. Yes. They are- he's looking like, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it is amazing. It is pretty incredible. Yeah. So... Then it's the next day, I guess, and there's a crime scene, obviously, because a dude got his heart chopped out of his fucking chest. And Buffy just casually strolls into this crime scene. Like, there's a cop, like, trying to hold people back, and Buffy just, like, backdoors him. Dude, it's a doorway. <laughs> yeah. like, it's a dorm doorway. You can cover both. Entr- you can cover the entrance. Yeah. So... Uh, Buffy looks and she's like, holy shit, this yeah. is fucked up, dude. Yeah. Then we go back to Olivia at Giles' house and she starts drawing. She's a great artist. She starts drawing the... <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, this episode and uh, an angel have drawings in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but she draws the gentleman perfectly. And she shows it to Giles, and he's like, "Huh? Are you a watcher? Op- <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you? You have watcher bloody? If you're not, they should definitely hire you. Yeah. You're pretty good at this. Um, but then they sh- they open the newspaper, showing like the killings and like all the crazy shit about it. Um, and then Giles looks at the gentleman thing, and he reads the newspaper. And he's like, "Huh? I'm gonna go grab my fairy tale book. Yes." And the other fairy tale that we had was the Hansel and Gretel one. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what that episode was called. It was one that I enjoyed. I think it's a lot. called Gingerbread. Yes. Um, so it's interesting when they're like, you know what? We're doing a fairy tale episode. Yeah. I mean, their fairy tale episodes, they got a good run with their fairy tale episodes. I know. They get dark and like, I, I think. Like the uh, gingerbread had like, oh my god, the people are the vi- villains now. Yeah, this one has like the demons are the real villains. Um, yeah, like both of those are great episodes. I think that was some of the tensest stuff in Gingerbread was when mm-hmm. like the parents were ter- turning on the kids. Yeah, and like yeah. Buffy's at her at odds with her mom. Yeah, and it's like you don't know oh what you're god. fucking talking about. <laughs> yeah. The mom is like being manipulated by dude. That was yeah, a that, good episode. Yeah, that mob mentality stuff. That's. Mm-hmm. Um, I will say. <laughs> It seems like the town's going crazy, right? Mm-hmm. But all the news people, newspaper people are able to get out a newspaper. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, no one could talk, but they were able to, like, coordinate, get the yeah. newspaper printed, get the stories. <laughs> like, oh, how do you know that someone's heart got cut out? Someone just wrote that down and told you, and then you reported on it? Like, things are still functioning in the town. Yeah. Like, it's no way you should get a newspaper out. That's capitalism, baby. People still got to work. Still got to go to your fucking job. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the gang uh, somehow after Giles like reads his fairy tale book and gets some more information, the gang all meets up at Buffy's psychology classroom. Uh, and Giles does a little like slideshow presentation on like that old school uh, transparency uh, presentation thing. That old, yeah, that is that throws you back. A little yeah, bit. that old school. Uh, I don't know, like you had to be like a, a certain, projector. It's it's that projector where you put the little slides on it, and they have to be face See down, through. reverse, and it shoots up on that little like ET looking arm that shoots yeah. the projects it. And I love this scene so much. 
Yeah, it's a great scene. It's it's great. It's a great use of like, hey, we can't talk. I have to get information across. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's just a lot of fun and stupid stuff in this scene. Yeah, a lot of silly misunderstandings and stuff. And, you know, Giles. One thing that I do love about this presentation is like Giles is not a great artist and he's not trying to like do anything fancy. It's Giles just like is a great figures. artist though. Yeah, no, but he's like, I got to get this across. Yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah. Here's some stick figures. Yeah. <laughs> so he, you know, puts the transparent on first and it's backwards. And Willow's like, it's backwards. <laughs> Anya, like, just, uh, Anya does the thing where she like rotates her fingers. Like she's bored. Like, yeah. yeah. Anya's got uh, some popcorn. Anya <laughs> is great in this scene. Like, yeah, she's hearing she's this, loving it, man. She's hearing this horrible stuff and just eating popcorn. When yeah. you go to her and ask, any, yeah, she's got to know about the gentleman. Anytime something weird happens, I would be like, Anya, has this happened in your thousands of years of living? And she's like, <laughs> Well, once, yeah, like she yeah. should know everything. At least, like, like ask her first. As he did ask Spike if he knew about anything, and he said no. But yeah. yeah. So, you know, they're going through and Giles is like, the people that are uh, doing this are called the gentlemen. They come from fairy tale books. And what they do is they steal people's voices. And I think it's Willow is like, somebody motions that. Well, he's like, he's like, uh, and do you know what they want? And Willow's got her hand up because she's a brown noser like yeah. teacher's pet kind of thing and she's pointing to her chest and then xander goes boobies and just yeah, boobs. boobies yeah. <laughs> and then giles is like fucking xander yeah. idiot and then he flips and then he flips over like the slide and it's like a heart yeah it's and, like they want uh, hearts and then they cut to anya she's just eating popcorn like not yeah. even worried yeah um, uh but yeah giles is like they steal the voices and then they they take your heart um, and then this is when Buffy goes, oh, I think Xander asks, how, Xander. Do, we, Xander asks, yeah. how do we kill them? And then Buffy yeah. gestures that she's going to stake them. And somehow Giles and Xander, mis- <laughs> they look at this as her giving a hand job. Well, it, she does do like kind of like the jerk off motion because she does the stabbing like in her lap. Yeah. And Giles but, and Xander look like, what? <laughs> and Buffy's like... like Fucking, you know what I'm doing. I know. It's like, it's funny because Giles looked at Xander when he did the boobies thing, like, you childish idiot. But then when Buffy does that, Giles and Xander are like, Buffy, please. <laughs> so please her. Remember the last time they gave somebody a happy? <laughs> and then she takes out the steak and does the same thing. And they're like, oh. Yeah. And then Giles is like, oh, I've got an answer for that. He's, he flaps the thing on and says, no sword can kill them. Um, oh, yeah. but the one time that in the fairy tale that the gentlemen do appear, a prince got his voice somehow and screamed and the scream killed all of them. And then Willow is like, how about this? I've got a CD. What if we just play music? Will mm-hmm. that do it? And Giles is like, no, it's only a real human voice can kill these dudes. And, um, then Buffy asks, how do we get our voices back? And then Giles is like, this is the best part. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but guess what? You're going on patrol. patrol. Buffy. <laughs> <laughs> but guess who got patrol duty? <laughs> oh, I do like, because I have a, a big book of uh, Grimm's original fairy tales, which mm-hmm. is, those things are dark. Yeah, Man. dude. Rumpelstiltskin is dark as mm-hmm. fuck when you read it. And there's a bunch of like little weird short ones. And you're like, man. All right. Um, but most fairy tales explain like it's weird that this fairy tale that he read explained how to kill him but not how the person got their voice back yeah (laughs) and that it had to be in fairy tale times there weren't recordings so why would it say oh it has to be a human a natural voice because that's the only way you could hear a voice back then yeah Um, I mean you would you should test the recording thing at least (laughs) yeah who knows but um, uh, no, I think it's a good, I mean, it's cool. It leads to a really great ending. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so Buffy's going on patrol. The rest of the gang is going to help Giles do research. So Riley gets his uh, his initiative team ready to do patrol. They are suiting up now. Now yeah. that they've been murdered, so they're like, all right, you can be a fake military walking around the city. And cops, mm-hmm. what do cops do when they see these guys? 
No idea. I guess they're just like, oh, I guess Halloween. Is it Halloween? Is it April Fool's Day? <laughs> they're like, oh, I guess I can go home. <laughs> yeah. But Riley's on patrol. Buffy's out on patrol. Um, Riley is like wandering around and he sees the clock tower where the gentlemen are. Mm -hmm. And he sees a bunch of shadows moving and he's like, that's fucking weird. I'm going to go in there by myself and not yeah. with my team. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we then cut to Tara. Uh, she somehow gets Willow's dorm number or, uh, or is, it's her well, dorm number, right? Yeah. Yeah. She's got like, I'm sure they exchange information and it's like, yeah, but it's a close up on the number of, I, and it's like the number of the door in Willow's name. Mm -hmm. So we know that she's going to Willow's room. Yes. And it's just so, like the second time we got a room number in this episode. So she's, you know, walking around and she's like, all right, I'm going to go see this girl Willow. Cause I think that she might know what's going on or might know how to help. Cause she oh. seemed to be the only actual witch in the Wicca group. Yeah. We're bad as witches. We can solve every problem. We don't need <laughs> slayers. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she does the typical fucking horror movie fall. For no reason. Like, it's not like anybody's even chasing her at this point. Dude, she just trips it, it, and falls. Did she fall or drop? I, it, it's just random. Like, it, it's just a setup. Yeah. To think, but yeah. So she trips and falls. And as she's picking up all her shit, like, in the background, you see the gentleman float by. And they float by, like, they're floating pretty fast. Like, what we saw before, like, they're mm -hmm. floating at, like, a slow walking pace. Mm -hmm. But this is, like, they have segues now. And they're just floating pretty fast. Yeah. And they spot Tara and she's like, oh, shit, what the fuck is this? And yeah. she starts running, dude. Yeah, and they're coming for her. Um, so then we cut to Buffy and Buffy sees the gentleman and she gets caught by one of their like henchmen. And she, you know, she starts fighting the people, but, uh, you know, they catch her eventually. Um, the Wicca girl is run uh, Tara is running uh, around and she's banging on all the doors and uh, nobody answers them. And I don't know why. I know exactly why, because oh, someone was murdered in their room. <laughs> like, fair, fair, fair like, enough. There's the, fair enough. There's a heart stealer. You're like, oh, hello? Yeah. But uh, she's like banging on the doors and there's this like fake out cut mm -hmm. with Willow where Willow is in her room and she's asleep at the computer and then she wakes up because she, it makes it seem like she hears the banging on the doors. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, she it's actually not her. But then we go back to the, Buffy. The fake out was interesting but didn't make any sense yeah hold on so we go back to buffy and buffy's beating up the minion dudes riley goes into the clock tower gets attacked by the minion dudes um tara is banging on the door uh that we had the willow fake out because one the one door that tara is banging on that actually does open it's one of the gentlemen inside and he's got his scalpel and it's all bloody and he's like hey what the fuck is over there <laughs> um so then that dorm room was apparently like a couple doors down from Willow's dorm. Yeah. So Willow hears a bunch of commotion out in the hallway and she walks out and Tara just fucking blindsides Willow and just tackles her. I don't then, know why Willow wouldn't stay at Giles' house. I would not stay in the dorm room where the dorm where someone was murdered. Dude, I wouldn't stay in this city. I'd move. <laughs> Well, I think it's probably, I would love to see the border of like people trying to leave town and them trying to stop them because it's, oh, it's quarantined. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so then Willow sees the gentleman and then she just starts taking off with Tara. So then we go back to the clock tower and Riley's getting his ass beat uh, by the minion dudes. R Buffy shows up and she starts beating up these minion dudes. Uh and Riley's kind of beating up the minion dudes. And then they have like a face to face, like holding weapons at each other. Yeah. Because Buffy's got her crossbow and Riley has his like taser gun. God, that gun, gun is so lame. Yeah. I hate it. I don't know. It's something. It, it just reminded me of uh, uh, that other watcher who had that glove, that power glove. Oh, powers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, I mean,. Have we seen, we've seen them use guns in this show. Darla had double pistols. Yeah. So you could use guns. They're using these weird taser, <laughs> this military got these weird taser guns that run well, out of power. Because, well, it's because they want, I think the initiative, like, they, don't they want to do experiments on the demons and shit? 
But don't they know some demon? Like, they do, but is it all capture? Yeah, I don't know. Like, if your life is on the line, you'd want to, like, <laughs> like, some more firepower, you know? I feel like they have handguns on them. I feel like it's no way his one gun goes down and he doesn't have another piece. Yeah. Um, but like, yeah, a combat so, knife, maybe? So, Riley and Buffy, they do a little face to face and they do a little, like, what what are you doing here? What what do you have crossbow? Oh, what are you doing here? Why do you have a gun pointed in my face? <laughs> She's like, you can see this. You didn't see the stake I pulled out in front of you the other <laughs> episode. <laughs> but then they're kind of like, well, we're both here. Let's start beating some minion ass. Mm-hmm. Um, so they start to beat up the the little straight jacket guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Giles and Spike and Anya and Xander are all hanging out in their uh you know, we're doing research and Spike goes to the refrigerator and he gets his cup of blood with his mug and he drinks the blood. He drinks it cold too, which I was surprised yeah. by. I thought he would a little, thought he would yeah, nuke would, it. Yeah, you would think that they would want it warm. I thought he would nuke it. Whatever. Put it on the stove, you know, boil, boil yourself up a hot, hot pot of blood. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he's regular face and then he drinks the blood and he turns into a vampire face. Good effect. Very quick. Yep. So he goes over to the couch where Anya is sleeping and he's like goes onto the floor. I don't know what happens why he's on the floor. I think he's researching something or looking at some yeah. books. I don't know. He just kind of bent over. Yeah. So he's got a blood mustache, like a milk got, mustache. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Xander then appears and he sees Anya like passed out on the couch and then he sees spike lift his head up and he's full vampire face and xander misinterprets this as like he's fucking feeding on my girlfriend i'm gonna go beat this guy's ass yeah and xander (laughs) does that (laughs) he does like he beats the shit out of spike for like a good couple of minutes (laughs) yeah like he's decking him and Spike's just taking it because he can't harm yeah. people, I guess. Yeah, he's just getting wailed on. Yeah. I love it. I will say and that Xander has always, he would always come to the aid of his friends. Yes. But he would also do that for like someone he likes, like Anya. Yeah. 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 So like he would have done it if it was Willow, if it was um, Buffy. Buffy. Yeah. He might have thought twice if it was Giles. He might have hesitated, <laughs> but then he would have hesitated, but then jumped in. <laughs> Yeah, but like, yeah, he he just jumps in the line of fire a yeah. lot of times, and uh, so he's just beaten. Well, I mean, I guess this isn't really the line of fire. Well, if he thinks that Spike is feeding on Anya, I guess it is. The I line mean, of- he's a- attacking a vampire that he yeah. thinks is full vampire attack boat. Like, yeah, this is that's balls. Yeah, like I mean, he he stood up to Angel, and Angel was Angelus. That's true. Like, I mean. Yeah, and that dude, that scene in the hospital was fucking well, badass. Was it? <laughs> yeah, it he just was. gets up in his face and he's like, "You're gonna die, and I'm gonna be there when you do." I was like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" Yeah. Um. But uh, so as Xander's beating the shit out of Spike, Anya wakes up and she's like, "What's going on?" Uh, oh, Xander, wh- what are you doing? And he Xander kind of looks at Anya and he's like, "Oh, you weren't getting fed. I thought that Spike was eating you." And, and I think he's like, "No." Comes out too, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they're like, no, 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 that's not what happened. You're this is a misinterpretation. And Xander's like, oh, shit. But Anya takes this as like earlier in the episode when they were like, you don't care about me. She takes this as like Xander will get into the line of fire for yeah. me and defend me if he mm-hmm. and like also when Xander realizes that Anya's okay, he like grabs her and hugs her. He starts yeah. kissing her. Yeah. And Anya's like, okay, you've just proven that you really care about me. And then she does the let's fuck finger motion. (laughs) And everybody just like sees it and rolls their eyes like, God damn. He like nods and they hold hands and run out. And it's just like, (laughs) this is like for Giles, like the worst thing. I think Olivia's there too. Yeah. Yeah. Olivia's there and she sees it on. Yeah. I, I like that scene. <laughs> I just poor, love it. Poor Anya. Spike, though. <laughs> I just love it. Anya did the finger in the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, I like that she like she talks about Giles. As, she's like, is this a fornicating friend? And this like, is an orgasm friend. It's an yeah. orgasm friend. <laughs> so good. Um, Great so, addition. Great addition to the show. Just like Anya brings a nice like uh, knowledge of demons. A mm-hmm. fun like disconnect to humanity yeah yeah so after that scene willow and tara are still on the run they're running and then they eventually hide 
in some room and uh i think they're in the laundry room it looks oh, like the exact okay. laundry room where uh where if she where, only knew that yeah. oz and veruca for <laughs> i was like <laughs> Fuck, what is that like, i was <laughs> gonna say Rolodex sunday but, i was like yeah, yeah. uh yeah oz um, and Rubrica when they were and he, this was where oz was like no i will not have sex with you on this dirty laundry mat floor yeah and it looked like Veruca was like grabbing at his junk. <laughs> That's what sure didn't see. <laughs> Anything like that. happens off screen that <laughs> vaguely could be junk grabbing or junk mutilation. It's that's what it is in my head. So when Xander was just punching Spike in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, people talk a lot about head cannon. For me, anything that happens slightly off screen. But <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know why Buffy keeps shooting s- stakes into people's crotch. <laughs> That's not where the heart is. <laughs> but uh, so they lock themselves into this laundry room and, you know, they're worried about uh, the, the, the gentleman and the minions breaking in. So they try to like move this gigantic soda machine to the front of the door and they can't do it. Okay, there's a couple of things in this scene. I didn't know that you could do witchcraft without uh, reciting anything. Yeah. Um, I guess she can move pencils without saying anything. So I guess she did it's do been that. established. And she does mention that she wants to learn how to move stuff bigger than pencils. Earlier, Willow's complaining about being not being that good of a witch. And even mm-hmm. later in this episode, you have given Angel back his soul. Mm-hmm. You've helped save Buffy from having her soul sucked out of her. You, you gave yourself the power to, to anything <laughs> that you speak becomes real. Like, you have done so much. You, Why are you you, na- you don't realize it, but you did turn Amy the rat back into a human for yeah. a half a second. <laughs> I mean, it, you were about to do a spell to make it so that Oz would never find true love. And things were floating. <laughs> like, like, all those beakers were floating. And you're like, yeah. ah, no, I don't want to do it. Yeah. You did a spell with Anya that brought vampire <laughs> Vamp Willow into the this reality. You have mm-hmm. crossed over multiverses. Yeah. You're pretty good. <laughs> yeah. But so she's they're they're both physically trying to move the soda machine. No, at no. First, they're not it, trying to physically move it at all. No, they do. They try to push it at first and do then they? they sit down. Oh okay. and then Willow's I, like, I'm going to fucking move this with my mind. I didn't I missed them trying to physically move it because that was one of my things. I was like, the two of them could probably push that over there. <laughs> okay, yeah. they did at least show that they couldn't. Yeah. Okay. Um so then they're sitting down and Willow's like focusing really hard. She's trying to move the soda machine with her mind and uh it starts shaking. Mm-hmm. Um but it, it, she can't move it. And then Tara sees this and she's like, oh, shit, this girl really does know how to do witchcraft like I know how to do. Bump, bump, bump. Big surprise. They hold hands and then they combine their mind power and they fucking just rocket this fucking soda machine <laughs> the to the interlock door. interlock fingers yeah. on their hand. Like it is very, uh, yeah. 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 You know what's funny is that Willow found her vampire group or like her uh, witch group in high school with Amy and that goth dude that got beat up. Yeah. Michael, I think his name yeah. was. Yeah. Like, so in high school, she was able to find three witches. I mm-hmm. think in college, you're able to find, you got to at least find five. Yeah. I mean, we got exactly. we got This is huge. We got a werewolf, a witch, and a slayer all hanging out. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's some witches floating around. Uh, speaking of floating around, Buffy. <laughs> so now we go back to Buffy and Riley, and they're getting their asses beat. Uh, the the straitjacket minion guys are just like, they're taking it to them at this point. They're ganging up on them. Uh, Buffy gets thrown to through like some part of the, the watchtower, and she f- discovers where the hearts are being uh kept well, before in the that, jars before that she's she grabs a rope and does a mm. swing kick yeah across dude, the room that guy got fucking <laughs> launched dude he flew back like he got hit with a cannon yeah. and riley is fighting and looks at this and he goes what the fuck <laughs> is this girl's deal it was amazing yeah, um, I forgot about that. It, it was a great moment for Riley to be like, okay, she's not just like, oh, I can fight and I'm out here. 
Yeah. Yeah. She's not like most girls. Nah, she's not like <laughs> most girls. She's special. I don't know why. Maybe because she's hot and blonde. Yeah, I get it. You've been bringing it up every fucking time <laughs> I talk to you. I'm just trying to get some pussy, Riley. <laughs> <laughs> I, was just pu- I was just putting on this act. Yeah. Like, watch Force come out to be gay. Oh, you know that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so, Buffy discovers where the hearts are, and the floating gentlemen show back up, and they're like, oh, we're here now and like shit's going to arrive. Who are these two people? Riley gets his gun and he zaps them. <laughs> and then they start fighting the straitjacket minions again. And then at one point, Buffy gets stabbed in the back, it looks like, by one of the gentlemen. Yes. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear this, but there's a lot of honking of cars like on that corner outside. I don't know if you can hear oh, it on man. the podcast, but... Um, I, I noticed this. This the one of the gentlemen has the scalpel and he stabs Buffy. And we don't see mm-hmm. exactly where it is. She just goes, ah. And yeah. I was like, wait, this leather jacket is not as strong as her red riding hood cape that yeah. was stabbed in uh in uh, uh, that Halloween that episode. Yeah. <laughs> like that guy had a real knife. Yeah. I mean it. Yeah. She got she got fucking stabbed. Yeah. Uh so then Buffy's being choked out at this point and she's like up in the rafters and she sees where the, the hearts are and there's a box in the middle of the hearts and Buffy sees it and she's like, oh shit, I remember that from my vision dream that I had way earlier in the episode that Joe and Vance forgot to mention. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we forgot about that. Thing. Forgot to mention that. Well, Sorry, we, we, well, we did bring up that there was like a girl singing yeah, a yeah, yeah. Ron thing. But yeah, she had a box. I, yeah, she gets these premonition visions, which is real convenient for the yeah. Slayer. So she sees Riley and Riley's kind of near where this box is and Buffy's like banging on the thing and Riley looks up and she's like, the box, the box. And Riley's like, okay. And he smashes like the wrong thing. I yeah. forget what he smashed. He smashes some like beaker that's next to it. Yeah. And Buffy looks and she's like, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great moment because the look of satisfaction that he has on his face when he does it. It's like, it's kind of it. like, it's kind of like Buffy in that uh, yes. Halloween episode when she breaks the, the ritual uh, symbol or whatever. Yeah, when she punches the floor and she gets up, she's like, how do you like me now? And yeah. Jaws is like, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Riley kind of has the same vibe going yeah. in this where he's like, I did it, right? Yeah. And Buffy's like, you dummy, no, the box. <laughs> and then so Riley's like, oh, okay. And he breaks the box. I don't know where the gentlemen are during any of this. Yeah. It's like You'd they were like somebody would be protecting that. Well, I mean, I guess there's one in there, but I don't think they ever push that one away. It's mm-hmm. like the henchmen, right? Like, I yeah, think it's, it's always his- the henchmen are fighting and then... The one guy stabbed Buffy, but then that's it. Like, they never mm-hmm. really physically interact with him, I don't think, that much. Yeah. But, yeah. So, Riley breaks the, the actual box, and it gives everybody their voices back. And as soon as Buffy gets her voice, like, sucked back into her face, she just goes, ah! screams for so long. Mm-hmm. And all of the gentlemen's heads just blow up and explode and... It was so cool looking. Yes. Like it was. It, it's just a great payoff to a silent episode for her to get a voice, give this amazing yell. Yeah. And for that to just destroy them all. I loved everything about the gentleman, dude. Yes. Yeah. There's not a lot of like the only my only like minor, minor gripe is how like <laughs> it was the end of the world so quickly. Mm-hmm. But you know it's a it's a show. You got to quickly get to some stuff. The kiss I don't I don't think really gets like the kiss happening like after the scream would have been better maybe. Yeah yeah yeah. But I don't know. Like it's just a weird. It was a weird timing for the kiss. It didn't seem like it built up yeah. to like the first kiss moment. But um. But these are great villains though. Like great for villains. a for a one off villain, <sighs> these guys were fucking yeah. t- top tier A plus elite status one-off villain we're gonna Love need it. like a mayor or an angelus or spike to turn bad again for like yeah. and for the season four recap yeah man. for someone to top this man these guys are gonna be tough to beat yep the bar um, has been set yeah so after the gentleman's heads explode great effect too like mm-hmm. it looked great oh, everything gory, was great like about this, this goop came out of them yeah it was like green yeah loved it everything about it so yeah. good uh so 
Willow, it's the next day. Willow and Tara are like, they bond o- over about how, you know, I always knew that witchcraft was real. And like those other girls in the Wicked group, they have no fucking idea what they're talking about. And Willow's like, yeah. And Tara's like, dude, I, I knew that you had it in you. I knew that you were a real witch from the moment you were talking about it in Wicked Group. I knew you were special. And uh, Willow's like, eh, I'm nothing special. There's nothing special about me. And Tara's like, no, there is. And then they have this like look at each other. And it's mm-hmm. like, uh, this is the start of something. Mm-hmm. So Tara's a character that I knew was in the show. Okay. See, I never knew about Tara, but I knew of something that goes on with Willow. Um, I guess. But I won't say, like, I think I know the thing I know about Tara is also a little different than what just happened. So mm-hmm. I won't say what it is since you don't know. But yeah. Well, Tara, sticking with this episode, and, and uh, we'll get to conjecture later on. But uh, <laughs> Will, Tara's. Yeah, I, I know some big words. Uh, Willow, uh, Tara's mom apparently was like a super powerful witch. And she's like, oh, I yes. recognize that in my mom. And I recognize that in you. That's how I know that like you're a, you're a special one. And Willow's like, okay, well, whatever you say. First thing Willow should do is like, I have a rat I need you to check out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can your mom help with the rat? Fucking that would have been tra- so funny. That would have been such a funny line at the end of that scene. Do you want to see my uh, rat? And then yeah. Tara's like, what? <laughs> um, so then we go to Olivia and Giles. And Olivia's just kind of like laying on Giles's lap. And Olivia's like, holy shit, dude. Like, <laughs> you told me about all this stuff being real. And I never believed you. Um, but holy shit, this shit is real. And Giles is like, yeah, I mean... I wasn't lying about all that stuff. I, I I wasn't an original member of I forget what band. Pink it is. Floyd, yeah. Pink Floyd. He's like I, I lied about that, but all this like dark arts and monsters and demons and vampire stuff, I was not lying about that. And Olivia's like, I didn't believe you, but I guess now I gotta. Yeah. Is I, Olivia gonna be a part of this show? Well, well, then, well, it ends on a. I forget exact wording of the line, but he's like, "Is it too scary for you?" And she's like, I don't know. Yeah. And it's like one of those things where she's like debating, like, I really like Giles, but this is some fucked up shit. <laughs> does <laughs> she like Giles or does she like fucking Giles? Yeah. But also, do you like fucking Giles enough to like die? In your this? Life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> she's like, I'm going, you can drive me to the airport right yeah. now. <laughs> He's like, they're demon over there, too. But then yeah. they seem to like be more attracted to you, Giles. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that scene. And our final scene is Riley going to Buffy's dorm. And he shows up and Buffy's like, hey. And Riley's like, hey. So I guess we need to have a talk. And Buffy's like, I guess so. And that is where the episode ends. I hated the last scene. <laughs> yeah, it's I mean, so melodramatic. Yeah, I mean it's everything so with like where they try to give Riley a cool line, he just botches it. I feel well. One, Buffy looked really strange, like standing, like she looks extra short, like standing yeah, by her yeah, bed yeah. in those like sneakers, <laughs> like those. <laughs> uh, and then he sits on Willow's bed because Willow's, you know, f- flirting downstairs with witchcraft, witch yeah. girls with their soul witch. Um, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, just, like, I know next episode they'll probably, like, I hope it doesn't start with, like, a really, oh, my God, I'm a slayer. I work yeah. for the initiative. Like, they can they can exchange this information, like, a more fun way. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't yeah. have to. They just fought. You mean to tell me you guys fought together, killed these demons, and mm-hmm. then you waited till the next day? Like, you walked, you went your separate ways after that. Right, <laughs> like you would be like, "Hey, I think we should probably talk." Like, yeah, after that, like you get a coffee, you go get now, some food. Now, what I'm wondering is, so obviously they're going to tell each other like secrets. Yeah. I, you're wondering you if Riley's that... going to tell his thing. Exactly. Yeah. I w- I'm wondering. Well, number one, I'm wondering if, uh, if they do 
share everything with each other. They're like, Riley's like, Hey, I'm part of this initiative. Buffy's like, Hey, I'm a vampire slayer. I wonder if Riley will keep it a secret from the initiative oh, or absolutely. if he's going to tell, oh, like, no. but like why, you know, because he knows that then the new villain will be her teacher and the teacher will look at Buffy differently. Yeah, I guess <laughs> because these shows all like hinge on secrets. I just don't know why. Like, they could be such assets to each other, you know? Like, the initiative at least has some kind of intel about some kind of... Like, their experiments... But but, but when they find out out she's been harboring Spike, they'll be like, we can't trust her. You're right. There's there's just all this stuff that's... It's well set up, honestly. Like, I've been watching some other shows that I'm not enjoying. I won't even go into them fully yet, but... You know, this; these are well crafted seasons, at least. Like, yeah, they have a lot. They have one, most of these seasons have too many episodes. Like, mm-hmm. if you cut out some of them, you leave a little fluff away. Mm-hmm. And some of the random ones are really great, but yeah. they do tell stories. Like, the arc of all the seasons are still like tracking. Yeah, like nothing has fully fallen off the wayside. Yeah, I mean, um, overall, I really loved this episode. I thought it was great. Uh, again i can't speak enough about how awesome the gentlemen are yeah. and like how terrifying they were and how terrifying their powers were like so good yeah have anything else uh left to say about this episode here vance um no it's gonna be interesting i it's interesting to see uh spike around olivia mm-hmm. if she sticks around a little bit she's uh oh man i can't i don't know if joust can handle losing another i feel like the next time Olivia is mentioned it's going to be like Giles being like no she couldn't handle it and that mm-hmm. like I feel like this is the last we're going to see of her yeah um but Vance the next episode is titled doomed um man that is <laughs> that's a hard one to guess it yeah. could be anything uh sure Giles's doomed relationship with Olivia uh, I was going to say Riley and Buffy's doomed relationship uh, yeah I guess we do have I guess that really is <laughs> The, the main thing the next episode has to deal with yeah i mean they have to th- i, I want to know like what they divulge to each other like the, i feel like they'll say a little bit maybe or like somebody will hold something back I something would, i would love it they're in the library and he's like okay i'm detailing the whole organization yeah, yeah. here's the structure <laughs> he has the like a powerpoint <laughs> and, and then she's like um well i'm a slayer and i guess i was just born this way yeah <laughs> he's like what <laughs> You're so strong. It'd be interesting if the initiative doesn't even know about Slayers. Yeah, that would be interesting. Because I feel like everything's in books. Uh, you know what? They, they'd be totally stupid not to because Spike was talking to another vampire about like, uh, I was chasing the Slayer. Like, do they not have like those rooms bugged? Do they not have recordings what, of that? Do you know what the, the biggest thing that like military does when they kidnap people is interrogate them? Yep. <laughs> do they not interrogate or do they just experiment? Uh, I don't know. I, yeah. I guess they think the vampires as subhuman. So like why even interrogate them? Yeah, I, but I that's know. what the military thinks about <laughs> people from foreign countries sometimes. True. <laughs> <They're> like, true. <laughs> so like they still ask some questions. But uh, yeah. yeah, so... That is it for this episode, everybody. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate you sticking it out. Uh, Holidays be damned. Holiday travel be damned. Um, So, uh, yeah, join our Patreon where we review Angel. We'll be having that up on Thursday. Well, today as well. This this Angel episode has got a lot of of key things in it. Oh, yeah. A lot of crazy shit going on in that Angel episode. and I got a little bit of backstory for a certain thing that happens in Angel as well. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, we got the Patreon Boys Watching Angel. We have Boys Watching Movies tier where we review one movie a month. Uh, join our Discord. The link is in the show notes. Uh, the Patreon is patreon.com backslash Boys Watching Buffy. Uh, Instagram at Boys Watching Buffy. We post updates on there and fun memes and all that shit. Uh, Boys Watching Buffy at gmail.com. Um, I think that's it. Am I forgetting anything here, Vance? Um, if you want to see my uh top movies of 2022 list, you can find that on the Discord yep. in the movies channel, or you can follow me on Twitter at is that Vance. Yeah, and also follow me on Instagram at Joe Welke. It's just my name, no spaces or anything. And uh 
you know, you can see what I look like. (laughs) (laughs) Eh. Yeah, it's nothing special. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is it, everybody. Thanks once again for listening and sticking it out through our little holiday delay. Um, and yes, yeah, stay tuned next time for when we talk about Doom. This feels very strange. Don't worry. If I kiss you, it'll make the sun go down. Thanks again for listening to Horror Fanatic by Indie Drop-In Network. If you would like to nominate a podcast for feature, just send me a tweet at Indie Drop-In. Indie Drop-In Network has many other shows you might enjoy. You can check them out at IndieDropIn.com. I'll put all the links at the bottom of the show notes to make it easy. All right, see you next time.